This is Teachable Moments with April podcast. I am your host, April. If you're a returning listener, I appreciate you and welcome back. If you're a new listener, welcome and thank you. To everyone listening, remember, Teachable Moments are all around us. Enjoy. Alright guys, so I am going to read you some content from CNN uh, Politics from yesterday, Thursday, June 15th at 10.03 p.m. And um, it says exclusive U.S. government agencies hit in global cyber attacks. Okay. Several U.S. federal government agencies have been hit in a global cyber attack by Russian cyber criminals that exploits a vulnerability in widely used software, according to a top U.S. cybersecurity agency. The U.S. Cyber Security and Infrastructure Security Agency is providing support to several federal agencies that have experienced intrusions affecting their Move It Applications. Eric Goldstein, the agency's Executive Assistant Director for Cybersecurity, said in a statement on Thursday to CNN, referring to the software impacted, we are working urgently to understand impacts that ensure timely remediation. Aside from U.S. government agencies, several hundred companies... Let me go back and say it one more again. Aside from U.S. government agencies, several hundred companies and organizations in the U.S. could be affected by the hacking spree. A senior CISA official told reporters later Thursday, citing estimates from private experts. Klopp The ransomware gang allegedly responsible is known to demand multi-million dollar ransoms, but no ransom demands have been made of federal agencies. No ransom demands have been made of federal agencies, the senior official told reporters in a back ground briefing. Now, CISA's response comes as Progress Software, the U.S. firm that makes the software exploited by the hackers, said it had discovered a second vulnerability in the code that the company was working to fix. The Department of Energy is among multiple federal agencies breached in the ongoing global hacking campaign a department spokesperson confirmed to CNN. The news adds to a growing tally of victims of a sprawling hacking, hold on, campaign that began two weeks ago and has hit major U.S. universities and state governments. The hacking spree, okay, mounts pressure on federal officials who have pledged to put a dent in the scourge of ransomware attacks that have hobbled schools, hospitals, and local governments across the U.S. Let me repeat that again. A scourge of ransomware attacks that have hobbled schools, hospitals, and local governments across the U.S., including the global, the global threat. Since last month, the hackers have been exploiting a flaw in widely used software known as MoveIt that the companies and agencies use to transfer data. Progress Software, the U.S. firm that makes the software, told CNN uh, Thursday that a new vulnerability in the software had been discovered that could be exploited by a bad actor. A bad actor? Okay. We have communicated with customers on the steps that they have they, they need to take to further secure their environments. And we have also taken Move It Cloud offline as we urgently work to patch the issue that company said in a statement. Uh, okay. Agencies were quick uh, quicker Thursday to deny that they'd been affected by the hacking than to confirm they were. 
the Transportation Security Administration and the State Department said they were not victims of the hack. The Department of Energy took immediate steps, in quotation marks, to mitigate the impact of the hack after learning that records from two department entities, quotation marks, had been compromised. Hmm. The department spokesperson said the department has notified Congress and is working with law enforcement, CISA, and the affected entities to investigate the incident and mitigate impacts from the breach. One of the Department of Energy victims is Oak Ridge Associated Universities, a non-for-profit research center, a department spokesman, uh, told CNN. The other victim is a contractor affiliated with the department's waste isolation pilot plant in New Mexico, which disposes waste associated with atomic energy, the spokesperson said. Federal News Network first reported on the Department of Energy victims. And of course, we heard, this is just me not reading the article, John Hopkins University in Baltimore, which is a renowned health system, said in statement this week that sensitive personal and financial information, including health billing records, may have been stolen in the hack. So I made some commentary about the couple in um, couple in um, Mexico who did not return, and they were staying at a Hyatt um, hotel, I believe, in Mexico. Um, so anyway, I made a comment about NGA, <laughs> and I think uh, I know that I got the story mixed up with the NGA reference to the previous My Two Cents in which um, I spoke on the recent uh, reported global cyber attack. So I apologize for that. So I wrote in the wrong area in my notes with the couple, the information that I jotted down from ABC News, ABC 7 News about NGA, which was actually supposed to be about the global you know, attack, uh, cyber attack. So I never heard of NGA, um, but I pulled up their website and it says, it's obviously it's an official website of the, uh, U S government at, uh, www.nga.mil. Okay. So the acronym NGA stands for national geospatial intelligence agency. So I only say that because I didn't know, and maybe there are some people out there that are listening that do know, but maybe there are people like me that didn't know that before. Okay. In a way, it makes sense. So let's, I'm just going to read some information from their website about what exactly that they do. Okay. So it says, know the world about, of course, I clicked home about and about us, uh, show the way from seabed to space. The National Geospatial Intelligence Agency, NGA, delivers world-class geospatial intelligence that provides a decisive advantage to policymakers, military service members, intelligence professionals, and first responders. Anyone who sails a U.S. ship, flies a U.S. aircraft, makes national policy decisions, fights wars, locates targets, responds to natural disasters, or even navigates with a cell phone relies on NGA. Now, NGA enables all of these critical actions and shapes decisions that impact our world through the indispensable discipline of geospatial intelligence. Okay, so NGA is a unique combination of intelligence agency and combat support agency. It is the world leader in timely, relevant, accurate, and actionable geo-intelligence. G-E-O-I-N-T. Okay, 
abbreviation. NGA enables the U.S. intelligence community and the Department of Defense, the DOD, to fulfill the president's national security priorities to protect the nation. NGA also anticipates its partner's future needs. The NGA also anticipates its members, its partners' future, their needs, future needs, and advances the geo uh, intelligence discipline to meet them. NGA is the lead federal agency for geo intelligence and manages a global consortium of more than 400 commercial and government relationships. The director of NGA serves as the functional manager for geointelligence. The head of the National System for Geospatial uh, Spatial, I'm sorry, Intelligence, which is NSG, a lot of abbreviations, huh? And the coordinator of the Global Allied System for Geospatial Intelligence, ASG. In this capacity, the director is charged with synchronizing operations to realize a professional interoperable, agile, and integrated geo-intelligence enterprise. NGA receives guidance and oversight from the DOD, the Director of National Intelligence, DNI, and Congress. NGA is headquartered in Springfield, Virginia, and has two major locations in St. Louis and Arnold, Missouri. Approximately 14,500 civilian, military, and contractor employees work across more than 100 locations in the U.S. and 20 international locations. Hundreds of NGA employees also serve on support teams at U.S. military, diplomatic, and allied locations around the world. All right, so... I think I'm going to end this particular uh, segment with this, and I may come back later and um, maybe share more information that I've, you know, as I go through the website and see, okay, what else they got that might be very interesting information about this particular entity. Okay, so it says NGA at a glance. So it's, it's eight. It's eight top things to remember about NGA at a glance. Okay. Number one, NGA delivers the tr- strategic, sorry, strategic intelligence that allows the president and national policy makers to make crucial decisions on counterterrorism, weapons of mass destruction, and global political crises, and much more. NGA enables the warfighter, okay, to plan missions gain battlefield superiority, um, precisely target the adversary, and protect our military forces. Number three, NGA provides timely warnings to the warfighter again, and national decision makers by monitoring, analyzing, and reporting imminent threats. NGA protects the homeland by supporting counterterrorism, counter narcotics and border and transportation security. NGA supports security planning for special events such as presidential inaugurations, state visits by foreign leaders, international conferences and major public events, Olympics, Super Bowls, satellite launchings, etc. Number five, NGA ensures safety or navigation, no, safety of navigation in the air and on the seas by maintaining the most current information. Let me reiterate that air and on the seas by maintaining the most current information and highest quality services for the U.S. military forces and global transport networks. Number six, NGA defends the national against, oh, against the national, national, the nation against cyber threats. The NGA defends the nation against cyber threats by supporting other intelligent agencies with in-depth analysis of cyber networks. 
Number seven, NGA creates and maintains the geo- geospatial foundation data, knowledge, and analysis that enables all other missions. Analysis, foundation data, knowledge that enable all, all other missions. And lastly, number eight, NGA assists humanitarian and disaster relief efforts by working directly with the lead humanitarian and disaster relief efforts by working directly with the lead federal agencies responding to fires, floods, earthquakes, fire, landscape, landscapes, landslides, hurricanes, or other natural or man-made disasters. This episode contains pre-recorded content. So for this particular episode of My Two Cents, I'm going to talk about... um, the rolling blackouts and power outages that have been happening here and there over the past, I don't know, maybe two, maybe a little bit more years. And as we approach, fastly approach summer um, with extreme weather and and other uh, external, you know, uh, attributes to to possibly losing power all over uh, the states, and maybe it even happens in other countries, I I want to share some of my thoughts on there and some of my notes that I took. So I did an episode a while back, and I talked about the things that I had learned that, that I didn't know previously that uh, there have been at least between 600 to 900 attacks to our infrastructure um, that I had no clue about, okay? Um, And it's across the nation. And the claims that funding had actually been allotted, okay, for maintaining the integrity of the power stations and the grids. So I wondered, why are we still dealing with power outages, Okay, why are we still dealing with it? If it has been threatened and actual valid attacks have been done to our power stations and the the power grid and the infrastructure, why hasn't certain things been taken into hand? And they even had even anticipated, so they anticipated for the future possible, which you would call cyber attacks, to the infrastructure. So I'm still kind of scratching my head. And as the extreme weather, as I said a second ago, people in Texas have gone at least 72 hours without power. And there are a lot of older people who have pre-existing conditions. Um, One off the cuff, off the rip, is diabetes. People who are on oxygen or need other kind of equipment to help them but they have no power so they have to go without okay not to mention um every food is expensive everything is sky high the scarcity people are living including myself in food deserts and i'm um, dealing with food insecurity so they have food in their fridge and now the food is spoiled Okay, and it was one particular lady uh, individual who was an older African-American woman and she shared something. She says that she has diabetes and she uh, is on insulin. And she said when it is extremely hot outside, that's when her blood sugar plummets low. Okay, so there's so many layers to this, and I'm just trying to understand if we are able to give trillions of dollars, okay, to other countries. I'm not saying don't help other countries. I'm not self, saying not help other people. I'm all for it. I have a very giving heart, okay? I'll give you the shirt off my back, okay? Anyone that is honest about me and knowing me and being around me for a certain amount of time will tell you this. 
I will give you the shirt off my back without even thinking about it. Okay, I'll give you my last. So I'm not a stingy person. I'm not uh, uh, whatever. Okay, but you have to, like they say, I hate to copy other people, make it make sense. Okay, so how are you able to do this? Why aren't you doing something about it? Okay, you give all of these monies to other places so that they can participate in war and destruction and desolation. People who are homeless, but you don't help the homeless people that are here, okay, you kick them out of the places that they're in. People who have actually served their country, okay, and they didn't have to serve their country. They did it and they found themselves when they came back homeless. And then they homeless and they living in a facility for homeless people, but you kicked them out and put somebody else there. Can I get a witness? Okay, so this particular woman said that she had no power for 72 hours. She has pre-existing uh, conditions. She's lost her food. Okay, her medicine is no good, null and void, because it must be refrigerated. And the oppressive heat that she had to endure, she said she doesn't even have words to describe what she went through physically. Uh, mentally, spiritually, emotionally. This is actu an actual real and very, very, very important thing. Why is nothing being done about this? Unless they want it to happen. I hate to say it. There's this weird indifference when things happen and it affects so many people, millions and billions of people. And then no one, they constantly talking, but when it's important for them to actually talk and, and man up, they don't say nothing. It's eerily quiet and silent. Why don't you have anything to say? Why don't you, why don't you come off some of them coins that you gave to all these other people? But yet people are sitting up in here like this, this poor woman. Um, who is retired and she's diabetic. She's on a fixed income. She needs her insulin. She's sitting up there 72 hours without power. Her food has gone bad. Her medicine has gone bad. It's hot. She ain't got no fan. She ain't got no AC. She ready to fall out. What, why is that happening? And you've, you already know that it's preeminent that that, that they're going to attack. You're having all of these issues. Now, let's say it's an outer. You're going to be attacked by the, the mysterious days they love to talk about. So you, you're dipping and diving and you're taking sides with people. They're going to retaliate. Let's, 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 let's go with the storyline that you're, you're, you're weaving here, that you're putting forth. If that is what it is, why aren't you preventing that? Why aren't you putting things into place? To avoid that, to protect America. You love America. You love it. You love it. You love it. You're patriotic. You love, 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 loving it. But all the Americans that are here, you're doing nothing, nothing, nothing for them. So where's all that love that you claim you having for the United States of the Americas? Because I love America. Do you love the Americans that are in it? Because it don't seem like it to me. When you have some kind of contingency protocols or plans in place. Because the summer, you already said the summer is going to be brutal. The weather is flip-flopping and switch hitting. One day it's oppressively hot. You can barely breathe. We got small. We got orange crap in the air. Nobody know where it came from. They said it was from the wildfires. But what I don't get is why, why, oh why is it looking like orangey? Why is it looking like Cheeto dust? Why, why is that happening? No one knows. No one knows. Why is it orange? California was burning, it seemed like, for two years straight. I don't remember that happening. Why aren't we doing something about that? Why? I would love to know. I ain't got no answers. What is it? But you love, love, love America. Are you really loving it? I don't feel the love. My final actual thought. Okay, guys, this is the next gauntlet that has been thrown. And all I can say is one sentence. 
or a little bit more is keep your eyes fixed on what happens next. Okay? Be vigilant and be ready as possible. just listening to Teachable Moments with April Podcasts. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. I invite you to connect with us on our social media platforms, TikTok, Instagram, YouTube, and Pinterest. I also encourage you to become a paid subscriber in order to gain access to subscriber-only exclusive episodes and content. As always, be well and stay blessed. Until next time.